Hey there friends, we are starting here uh, because we want to build a web project. Now to build a web project, we first off need to have a terrarium directory like so. So we hit mkdir, this will create a directory for us. Once we have said directory, we can cd into it, meaning we change directory and we can see that we are now in an empty directory waiting for us to create that first file that we need for our web project. To create that file, you could either use something like git bash or if you're inside of a Linux or, or Mac system or maybe the uh, you could be using a command such as touch. Touch with the second argument being the name of your file. So by running touch index.html we will now have a file to work with. Index.html, this is the entry point to your web project. This is what all web servers out there will look for by default. So from here, let's go into a coding environment. You could use a tool such as Vim or Nano. In this case, we will use Visual Studio Code. So we will open this with code dot. Code dot will mean it will open up Visual Studio. It will open up Visual Studio Code exactly where we're standing. So here we have a Visual Studio Code entry and we are ready to add whatever we need to create that web page of ours. First thing we will add is the doc type here on the top and followed by HTML. And HTML is a tag that we need. All web pages need this HTML tag. Now there are two different sections that we want to create to it. One is the header tag and the other one is the body tag. Now the header tag is not something that you will see visually and the body tag is something that you will see. Let's add the header tag meanwhile. What we've done now when we added our header tag is to add a title. You will see this as the top tab on your web browser so when you go to this site you can definitely see this title here being showcased as part of the browser. Meta, this is something that we need to search engine and the robots. This is instructions for them. This is also instructions to the browser, the viewport of the browser to say how should this be rendered. So here we can see device width, initial scale one and so on. We're not gonna go into detail, but next we will add a body tag. Now the body tag, this is where something is shown visually, for example, if I type this is shown, this will visually be seen. Now because this is a terrarium project and plant images, we will add this piece of HTML. This is quite a lot in one go, but it will give us a sense of semantic markup of what's going on. So if we just try to take these elements one by one, we can just do like that. We see that we have a left container and a right container. Let's dig into one of these containers, shall we? We see that that this first container, the left container, contains images. Images plant 1, plant 2, plant 3, plant 4, plant 5, plant 6 and plant 7. Were we to look on this side we see that there are a bunch of images. I think it's the same amount of images but now with plant 8 through plant 14. So that's great but we also see that it's using an image tag pointing to an images subdirector so this is interesting because if we're looking at our current director here we see we have one file and this one assumes that there will be an images subdirectory and this images subdirectory will have a bunch of png files in it which we don't have now what we can do to improve our page is to add a header one by adding a header one tag like this, we create a more semantic markup. In the beginning of the web, uh, pages were created so that they were all about text. And in today's world, it's more about building, well, still text pages, but also applications. Something that hasn't changed is the fact that we have headers. And this is the biggest header, the H1. The H1 will uh, render as the biggest possible header, unless you change the appearance, you can do that. But uh, semantically, what you want H1 to mean is that there should only be one title of a page. Compare this to using, for example, Microsoft Word. There should only be one header of your document. You can do uh, also, you can definitely have subheaders like H2, H3, but there should only be one H1. Okay, so now per instructions, we added a div tag here just before this last div here, meaning that if you look at what children we have now as part of the this one, this div ID page, if we just do that, 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 
we see we have, we have a left container, a right container and a terrarium markup. Now this won't actually render anything and I will actually show you why that is. I will uh, first visually show you why that is and then I will explain why nothing is happening because well when you add a bunch of markup to a page right you kind of want the result. Now one great extension that I really recommend that you use as part of your web development experience is something called Code Swing. Now Code Swing has the ability to pre-render what you're working with so you can still stay inside of Visual Studio Code, you can work on your code and then on your right side you will be able to see in real time when things are being updated which is a very nice experience for you as a web developer. We install Code Swing and now it's actually installed. So once it's installed we can open up the command palette and we can go look for Code Swing. Should be able to. Now, when we do open swing on our own directory that we're standing in, you can see how everything is being rendered. When we take open swing using Code Swing, you can see that we are getting a side by side view here. First off, we got here our file structure, then we have index.html, then we have Code Swing. What we're seeing is the header and we see a bunch of plants but we see a lot of broken links for images. Now as part of using the web it's important to know that when we are pointing to a local directory like so it expects the subdirectory to exist it expects all of these image files to exist so that's because we don't have that directory we don't have an images subdirectory here all of the images are broken. But yeah, as you can see, I introduced Code Swing to you and you get that instant gratification, that instant reward that what you're doing seemed to be working, but you still have work to do. You still need to add that image directory. You still need to add those images in it. Now, how do you fix the problem with images? Well, I've gone to the Web Dev for Beginners repo and I've located this source code folders. This is what will uh, fix our problem. These are 14 images of plants. This is a source code folder that we can click on the link and we see that all the images are here for us. So what we can do at this point is to start downloading all these files. Okay, so we've downloaded all of our image files. We have created our subdirectory images and we can see all the files within images directory. Now, question is then, will this show? What if we open up a new code swing? Will we actually get our images? So we do open code swing like before and it allows us to show our directory, our terrarium directory that we're inside of. We do open and we should see, yes, we see that perfect preview. Look at that. These are all the images for your terrarium project. And we see that each and every single one of them is rendering. So we have great confidence that our solution is in a good place. This was the end of this video. In our next video, we'll keep on enhancing this project uh, with CSS. So you will see some nice styling because right now the images are just one images below the other. It doesn't look super fancy, but with the power of CSS with cascading style sheets, you will be able to make this look really nice. But be proud of yourself. You have accomplished something today. If you've never built a web project before, You've done so now, you've added the markup, you've added semantic meaning to what you've been doing, you've added images. This is your first great steps as a web developer. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video where we'll make this look even prettier.